so you'd like to have a go at splitting some hazel well stay tuned in this episode for how we split hazel including three different camera angles so you can get a clear picture of how you can do it too also uh, when to split hazel what things to consider about that what tools you need and what materials you'll need to uh, to split the hazel and why we split hazel why on earth would you want to split a rod in half so what exactly do you need to rive or split hazel and to uh, split it in half like that well pretty simple really simple tools need an axe and a chopping block so that's about it really as for the axe, uh, this is a side axe, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you've got a fairly good edge on the front, that's what you want. You don't want a blunt thing, because all you do is just going to squash the hazel rather than actually just cut that first, um, when you first start the split off. The other tool you'll need is some sort of splitting post. Now you can do it by hand with a billock, but I'm not very good at that. So I use what I call a riving post or a splitting post. And all it is, this is a piece of larch, any old fence post, as long as that's in the ground fairly solid this one wobbles a little bit but it's not too bad and that is a piece of angle iron that I cut the angle off so I ground that off if I get up close you'll probably be able to see the the grind marks a couple of holes screwed into the post that's nice and solid it's about I'd say probably about three to four mil thick that is and it's just a bit of really old angle iron if you haven't got a post like this to fix it to then um, you could clamp that in a vise that's fixed to a bench and that would be just about the right height and um, of course it's, you can mount that pretty much anywhere so that's a riving post got your axe, got your chopping block so the first thing you'll need is your rods this is hazel what you want is nice long straight rods like that and you've got to dress them and if you want to know a bit more about dressing I did a little video on that the other day so I'll do a link to that video in the description. So with your rod selected, you want the thin end of the rod. Now I'm down to about half an inch there, and that's about the smallest I tend to split, between 10, 10 millimeters and 12 millimeters or half an inch. Pop that on the chopping block like that. Bring your ax, so you want your ax in the center of your rod, dead center, and don't hit it like that, because all you'll do is miss and hit your fingers so what you'll do is lift the rod with the axe like that and then bring it down together like that. Nice and steady. So you start the split off. You can see that? Start the split off in the rod with the axe. Now this is where it gets really interesting is we need your riving post and you've got your start of your split in your rod if you can see that and you want to pop it in there I'm holding this with my right hand at the moment steadying the rod uh, left hand on this and that's how you start the rod split I'm going to have to move the camera so we, with the rod in the riving post you want your hand quite close up to this you don't want your hand back here because you'll have no control of what's going on in the split you've got to try and control the splits you want your hand nice and close and I've got my elbow and the rod see that my elbows tucks the rod in against my rib cage so I've got sort of if I, I can hold it with no hands in a way so keeping your this all I'm doing with this hand is sort of guiding and sometimes putting a bit of pressure on so with that started I have got a little bit of a runoff there so this side is fatter than this side this one's gone thin and that's what will happen. It'll run off you'll lose the split and that'll be the end of it so what you want to try and do is control so what you need to do is open this left hand side we want to pull it to the left while also holding this so back in the arriving post and what I'm doing now is pulling with my left hand on this with the right hand just holding it steady not pushing and then with my body I can gently pull it over so I'm, I'm twisting to the left and just pulling that gently to the left and you can hear the split so now we have got the split coming back on center there look 
So then it's just a case of doing that same thing. And what you're trying to do is control it. So if it does start to run off, is knowing what to do when it does. So rather than, I don't push the rod into the riding post because all you do is run off again. The split will run off. What I intend to do is move my body to and fro, holding the rod nice and tight against, uh, up against the riving post, elbow holding it against the rib cage, and then to and fro, just opening up the split. Again, not pushing the split into the hole. I'm doing as I push forward, I'm just pushing it to it just pinches it up, and then. So let's try and get it where we've got the split running off to the left this time okay so now this side's the weak side this side is the strong side so we've got to put more pressure on the strong side so that means this side of the rod has got to be bent over like that and I'll try and explain what I'm doing with my elbow so again so this side what I'll do with my left hand is I'm going to push on the right hand side of this rod because the right hand side is the strongest this hand I'm just going to grip it this elbow pulling it in tight again pushing it over gently can you sort of feel it as it goes over and then bringing the rod and the split back into the center of the rod now it could be that you've got a knot like that so that knot could cause serious problems now you could try you can grip the rod close the split wiggle it backwards and forwards but I've got a feeling this one's going to cause me a problem. So what I tend to do now is, I'll do this off camera in a second, is I drop this back onto my splitting block, put the axe down the center of that knot to try and maintain that split, you see what I mean? Down there, I'll just tap it so I can get that split through the knot and that'll help us to carry on. Like that, look. But you notice now I've got a weak spot again. So this left hand side, on weak right hand side of the strong side so back in here lots of pressure on the right hand side to get that split to go back over so what you're trying to do is almost curve the rod round to get that split to come back into the center look so you see there it's gone very weak and thin fatty side bringing it back into the center to run along the fibers nice and slow steady gently moving the rod back and forward so here we have another knot I'm going to try and see if I can uh, get this to split without using the axe just to show you so we're nice and in the center and if I grip that and then move, oh there we go just sort of move backwards and forwards with that hand grip another technique you can do if you see it running off so we've got a weak spot there again just run off to the left can rotate it because I have a, a stronger side so I'm stronger pulling it off to the left especially when I've only got a little bit of rod left just here so so I'm pulling it pulling it in tight against my rib cage this hand I'm trying to pull it this way to try and create this into a curve because this is now the strong side I can tell that's gone back right till we get to the end so we have two split rods like that it's got an interesting curve to it but I should be able to use that so that's the cleft cleaving splitting riving some people might call it chopping but that's the uh, the riving process so a little bit about the rods themselves these are harvested in the winter time in the UK that is anywhere between October till about March they are harvested or cut from the stool the stool regenerates and produces more rods in about five to six seven years time depending on where you are and how big you want the rod I tend to do a five-year rotation because I, I want thinner rods rather than fat rods um, so that means they're green that green means they're freshly cut and that's when you want to split them so some people recommend leaving them for two weeks just to let um, a little bit of dryness come to the rod but I, I, I don't know whether that's 
I'm, I'm okay with splitting fairly fresh rods. They do split very, very easily when they're ultra fresh. So maybe that's the reason that you get a little bit more resistance when they're slightly drier. With regard to uh, when, or ha sorry, with regard to how long you can keep a rod before you split it, I can keep rods up until around about May to June and after that they're getting just a little bit too dry to split so I'm harvesting them in the winter I'm gradually using them in the winter so probably about four to five months and after that they're getting just a little bit too dry to split and it gets really tough on your hands and arms as well so why do we split rods? well it sounds absolutely amazing but that's not the reason why we split the rods Traditionally these were used in hazel hurdles which was um, what a shepherd would use to look after his sheep. So we wanted them light, strong, easy to carry, wanted them to last well. So a split rod is actually going to last longer than a rod that's left in the round with the bark on and that's because the bugs and the fungus get beneath the bark. Now if it's split in half that process happens a lot lot slower. So the, the actual hurdle would last a lot longer if you have split rods in it than if you have round rods in it which is worth knowing if you ever do buy or make panels it's always worth using as many split rods in them as possible because they make it last longer which sounds ironic because you're getting half the rod and also it's uh, we split them because it's getting the maximum value out of your rods so in a way you can cover twice as much area with the same amount of rods get the fundamentals in your mind with hazel splitting then it apply to things like chestnut and ash and oak and all those different species. I've done it with um, with uh, cherry before now you can do it with uh, birch um, lots of different species sycamore okay let's do another one so we'll uh, try and do a start to finish with this one try not to do any cuts in this one <laughs> I'll do a start to finish, so thin end of the rod, sometimes I just clean the end up, but um, thin end of the rod, like I say, bring the axe up, down with the rod, bring the rod up with the axe, down with the rod, and we have our split, so if I rotate you round to our riding post, and drop the split into the riding post, now it's just a case of I'll just rotate my body. Ooh. So start straight away. Look, we've got a very strong side on the on the left, weak side on the right. Early on in the rod, that can be quite a challenge because you want to see how I'm trying to bend that. Ooh. You see, that's what can happen. So that's a bit of a failure. Clean the rod up. Restart the split with the axe. Back in the split post. And all I'm doing, you might be able to see my body, just keep my hand up nice and close. I'm not pushing into the splitting post, just turning my body, keeping my hand and my elbow holding the rod, keeping it tight into my rib cage just letting the rod split open as I go over the riding post. Sometimes you get these slithers. Pop them out. That's all I'm doing, not pushing, just pushing it up to get to the next point of splitting. Now I've got some knots here, and you also notice this is the weak side, so I'm going to rotate it because this is I find this easier to be able to pull it to the left so now I'm going to gently pull this rod round to the left trying to curve it round this hand I'm going to try and pull this way because in effect I want to try and put, and then this my elbow is going to pull this end of the rod in tight to my rib cage so pulling that and then at the same time just putting the pressure on gently twist my body almost rotate my body is probably a better word to get that split to go I think it's just about gone there we go that's it so we've got past all them nasty knots a little slither there look. just 
so we're still fairly on centre. Keep gently pushing forward. Rotate my body. Not doing the left hand is all I'm doing is just sort of guiding it open. I'm not pushing or pulling with anything to my left hand. that knot gently rotate so we get towards the end of the rod and it pops open like that so I'm constantly watching where the splits going I can feel it to some extent so this one pull on the left because got need that splitting over to the left rotating in that what it's doing it's opening it up because this is quite a long it's about two inches long that to maybe inch and a half long this splitting post it's just opening it up naturally so now we've got splitting off to the left so I'm going to rotate it to help me so this now this left hand side see that strongest side I'm going to try and peel over so pulling on the rod this way like that Elbow pulling it into my rib cage, and then this side putting the tension on and just rotate my body at the same time. The sound is a bit like that. Is it ASMR? It's a lovely sound in the, in the spring, the birds are singing. Nice warm day. Just weaving panels and splitting the hazel it's absolutely brilliant love it one of my jobs this week is to uh, make this panel this is destined for a lady in uh, barton under needwood and it's to hide some weedy bins so that's it for this video hope you enjoyed it it's been a pleasure to be able to show you a little bit about how i arrive and split hazel so if you feel like you uh, fancy a go grab yourself some rods and an axe and a chopping block uh, and uh, I'm sure you'll be able to